Hey guys, Zach here. Let's go over a game I really like and show you kind of ins and out ins and outs of it called Gates of Horizon. Alright, let's log into that guy. I've already done a tutorial video on this game and it covered most everything except for one of the new features, Patrol, but I do have a video that covers that, so I might need to merge the two later. Alright, so here's the game when you sign in. That's your name up here. It's money you've got. You can have up to 20 agents. You start at leadership level 1 and you can go to 20. For every leadership level you get, you get another agent. So what's really cool is, this is a space simulation game. There's three tiers of ships so far. I've heard that they're going to be making more in the future, like, uh, for example, right now they have Scout, Cruiser, and Battleship. I've heard they might make, like, a large Scout, which is supposed to be kind of in between Cruiser and Scout, you know, ideas like that. I don't know when they'll get to it, but... That's just an idea I've heard. I'm not even sure if they're going to do it, but anyway. So here's what's really cool. Let me show you some combat real quick. So yeah, you have 20 agents. That means you can have up to 20 ships at a time. So there's kind of a real-time strategy element to this game here. You know what? Let me load the game in a bigger window real quick. Make it look better. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, much better, right? Okay. Now, let's see. All my guys are active here. Okay. So, it's, it's a pretty cool game. You actually played on your iPhone or Android phone, you can play it on those also, or tablet, any of that stuff. So let's see, I've got, these guys are in a party. Uh, basically in this game it's called a fleet, but they're a party in, in, in any other game because they share experience and things like that. So leadership up here, level 20, that's the max, which means you have 20 agents. So I have four agents in this ship. When Technically, I could run it with just one, but there's reasons for that, and this is where the game gets really cool, all the different customization effects you can do. So there's, here's the customization screen for a ship. You have to be docked in order to mess with this. So, let's go over it. So we've got actives, which is this top row, and for this cruiser, you can only equip three slots. So and there's two different kinds of cruisers. One of them only allows one slot, the other one allows three up here. Then you've got passives, which you see this outline of the bluish there. It's going to be those seven. Yeah, those seven. And then the bottom seven is your actives, or sorry, interactives. That's going to be like your guns, like lasers, or your healing lasers, where you basically heal someone from a distance. That kind of thing. Uh, mining lasers go down here too. Uh, your mass weapons also go down there. Alright, and there's basically two, two types of weapons in this game as far as like doing damage. There's the mass weapons and then there's the laser weapons. So they call it energy and mass. But yeah. So you can equip armors here, generators, which you need some kind of generation. Uh, see the 3200 per sec. That's pretty important because if we didn't have that see these, every 2.4 seconds they fire, uh, that's the damage, damage range, they'll cost that much. This is base stats. Depending on your agent's stats, you can lower this, and mine have lowered it significantly. But, uh, so you see, that's how much it's going to take, like every 2.4 seconds. And this generator gives it 3200 per second, so generators are pretty important for your ship build. You really need to watch it. Because you got all kinds of things that take use cost, you know, 300. That that heals my armor every second. 
So you got armor, you know, 70k armor there, uh, 18k. Here's your engine. You have to have an engine. That's where one agent has to be. No matter what ship you do, there has to be at least one engine, and your agent, one of your agents, has to be on it. So, whereas this is optional, you don't have to have an agent docked on the armor or generator or a gun. This is only one that's absolutely needed. And then the booster makes it go faster. So that's a cruiser right there. And cruisers require 100 skill points, meaning one character fully maxed out can solo drive the cruiser. If you don't have one, then you can put multiple guys on here to try to reach 100 gold that way. And that's something you should do when you're early level because it's much better to have a cruiser than, than four scouts. That kind of thing. Anyway, let's check this out. Here's So the game gets really cool with the customization. See all these skills you've got? Now, notice how on my cruisers, I got all these guys over here. Well, the cruiser itself is augmented by the stats of every agent on the cruiser. So that's where say three or four people docked onto a cruiser would be stronger than the equally built with all the same parts cruiser with just one of those agents on there. You know, depending on the stats you put in it, but most likely it would be better. Now if he's just like all mining and all just stuff that doesn't do with combat, if that's where the extra stat points from your other agents on board are coming from or adding to it, that they ain't gonna do nothing for combat, so they'd be equal in that sense. The example I just gave. But here's what's really cool. So you get 20 agents, and you can only have seven ships in a fleet. You can have as many fleets as you want, but it is quite a bit of a hassle to toggle between them because you can only actively control one fleet at a time. If you're not actively controlling your fleet, they go by AI settings. Which basically the green means the AI does everything on its own how it wants to, and it goes by the attacker defender, meaning defender would mean it prioritizes if you have an ally that needs healing and you have healing equipment available, you will heal that person. Attacker, you're going to prioritize attacking. So basically, if you do have split guns, like you have a healing gun and then the rest is just attack guns uh, on your ships, uh, this attack defender uh, dichotomy here becomes really important. So you can have seven here. I've got four on this fleet. But, so it is kind of hard to control 20 ships at once. So some of us uh, played the game for a, a long time, have figured out it's probably best to not go with 20 cruisers, even though in some statistics that, that could be the best, but controllability, it's not. It's very hard to control. So, so say I had uh, three fleets, one with seven ships, one with seven ships, and another one with six ships. I want to have, if all of those combined could easily take on someone's, uh, you know, super, super powerful battleship or something, if I could just, if all of my guys basically had no armor, but combined together, they could zap that guy in two seconds or one second. And so none, I would lose no cruisers because of this overwhelming firepower. It just bam, you know, just nuke them with 20. Uh, well, I'd have to attack them with this fleet, swap over to the other fleet, find the reference box, you know, have it, you know, uh, swap to it, swap to the ship. So you'd have to do that. Then swap to the other ship and make sure you're not getting into the second fleet or the first fleet when you're already attacked with them. So you got to find the third fleet. Uh, any ship in that fleet will do. Um, but you know, with all these reference, you got 20 ships of reference boxes around. You get all these other stuff, and you know, it's, it it gets really complicated to do it that way. Um, you can do it. It's just it's not it's not the most efficient. By the time you've done it, uh, you swapped over and did the attack command with all three of your fleets. Uh, he's probably already killed a few of your cruisers. You know, if they're all very weak just all pure attack and no defense kind of thing. 
even if they were uh, partially defense, chances are if you lose one or two by the time you've got. This is just fighting one person's really good battleship. You know, just a PvP scenario I made up on top of my head. Which is totally realistic if it's uh, if you're just going around trying to hunt people. Now, granted, it's really cool to have 20 ships. It's awesome. It's really cool. It's just the maneuverability, you're, you're going like in three different stages, you know, because you're going to be using three fleets. So it gets really cool to think about in this game how you're going to do stuff. And so to get into some of the combat tactics here, basically I've come up with the, these different ship builds of where I use battleships in one fleet. So I have everything I need in one fleet. So that could be all attackers, all, um, and you can only have six battleships at level 20 because each battleship requires 300 skill points. Well, if every agent maxed out, each individual one will give you 100 skill points. 20 divided by 3 is 6. So you can only do six, but then you could have two cruisers on top of that. Well, that makes eight ships. So that's one fleet, one full fleet, and then one extra. That's kind of useless too. Why not just make it one fleet? So there's a few ideas of thought you could do with this if you're trying to do the one fleet approach in game. What you could do is have six battleships and then your seventh ship make it a cruiser, probably a healer because he's just kind of there to support, uh, heal some of your guys. You could have six battleships, pure attack, and have that as a healer. You might do that, even though it would be easy to take out. But it's just kind of there as backup anyway. It's just an extra thing to throw in there. So, And every second they waste trying to kill that thing, it's more time your six battleships have to rain on someone. So, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. Or you could make him an attacker, but what you would do is you'd have two agents on that ship, so then you get your 20 agents filled out that way. And by the way, this is if you're a warfare corporation, which I have a few accounts that three of, four of them are just pure warfare. And I think if you want to have really good fun with this game, you're probably going to want more than one account. At least one for pure warfare, then your other one for mining, uh, trade, and refining, and uh, crafting, that kind of stuff. Which I, I've done that. I've got a corp for that, and I've got three for the other stuff, the warfare. But um, but yeah, de definitely. Uh, pretty cool game. A lot of customization options, and so let's get into some of the skill points here. All right, so let's look at the warfare. Okay, electronic. This is what you're going to be if you're like a healer. You're going to heal people. You can heal their armor or their shields. Now let's watch some combat real quick. What I'm doing right now is I'm at a camp, meaning I set my guys here and they'll automatically kill the spawn as it come up. That's because I have the proper standing, meaning you need negative 750k or worse, you know, up to negative 1 mil. Anything in that red range is going to get you uh, able to be able to camp something, meaning you set your ship there they will initiate battle on you automatically. And this only happens if it's, and I, I have a tutorial on this, a little, little video that shows you that, so don't worry, if I, I don't really go over it that well here. Say there's some ships, let's say, say for example, if that ship was right here and you click on it, it should, uh, yeah, there's an example right here. Yeah, you could camp that because they're all within 15 kilometers of each other, see like. So you just set your ship there and that's it. You just warp there. I'm already out of camp, but you would basically just send your fleet there, and if it attacks any ship in your fleet, the rest of your fleet responds, if they're within a 15 kilometer range. And if and I believe if you're within a thousand kilometer range, your ships, like, like if you're within a thousand kilometer range of your other ship that's in combat, your ship will warp to it and go over there, I'm pretty sure. You're, I don't know. If, I don't know what range exactly, but there is a range outside the 15 kilometer zone that your ship will automatically warp over there to help out an ally in your fleet. So yeah. Anyway. And so yeah, I get all this money automatically just 
sitting here. And you can do this while you're AFK offline. That's what's really cool about this game too, is you have all these offline AFK options for stuff to do. But so cool is just the customization options here. So for example, you know, you can you have a hundred skill points to spend. These down here are your advanced skills, meaning you cannot fill any of these until you fill this the one that's previously acquired of it. Once you fill this one, you can choose to go that way or that way or both. You know, that kind of thing. So you got so so you got the improved aim, that's gonna do your range and point blank range, long shot, precision. Now basically this is the super skill in that it does both of these. Once you max this out, uh, basically half of what you're getting from here is gonna is split up into these two. So these two are basically this split in half. And you know, same same here. This does one point in both of these of what these do, if that makes sense. Like one point here doesn't give you the point here. What I'm saying is one point here is equal to an efficiency in what it actually does for your ship. Point one point in both of these. Same as this one for one point in both of these. So these are the most important. If you're trying to be if you're trying to go all the way around, like if you're using one or two agents, for example, and not three or four, if you're just trying to get the your bases covered, you're probably gonna want to split up between some of these, like you're trying to be balanced because you get more bang for your buck on these skills than the ones down here. That makes sense. Uh, basically, you're getting maneuver and control with pilot because it's ship speed and acceleration, whereas this is just the speed and that's just the acceleration. So see what I mean? But, uh, weapon damage. Yeah, so this is all weapon damage and this is just mass weapon. This is just energy. So you see how that does both with just one skill point does the effect of both. You see what I mean? So yeah. That kind of thing. But yeah, that's what's, um, so there's some ideas here you can do. You can go, f just some thinking about it. There's sniper builds, there's healer builds you can do. There's even, you could have, you could have a ship that's, let's, let me open up the battleship here. Because here's what, here's a battleship. N thus far, there's not seven guns for any ship, but everything else is seven, seven, and then five. I do think in the future they're going to make a battleship type that will have seven guns available to fill that up. I mean, they wouldn't just put those there for no reason, right? But, and I've heard them allude to that before. So anyways, up here is where you can have boosters, you can have scanners for, you know, not that they're that useful on them, they can be, but as far as like direct combat, if you're already in combat, they're useless, you know, you'd rather have a healer at that point, like a self-healer. So you can have healing. You have armors, generator, engines, so, and then you have all your guns down here, and the gun type stuff. So, say for example, some strategy idea, you could have ships with R transfer, you could totally remove the generators here, and then that'd be two more slots you could have for more speed with the engines, which I don't recommend that, because if you're, because you don't, if you're going to go for speed, your boosters, kind of pull more in for you. I mean, there are some really good engines that do better than boosters, but that means you're going to have to have a, for each of those, you're going to have to have a high pilot level agent, and so you're just kind of redundantly getting the pilot skill. Because, say, say for example, you have three agents on here, all three of them have 25 control, which is max control, which is the max uh, control is a skill that is required for manning higher level engines. That skill, if you have it three times on your ship, it does not help you whatsoever unless you're using three engines that require that. And all and you're not getting anything from the skill other than whatever the engine gives you. Basically if you have three control twenty fives, it's not as if you have control twenty five applied three times. It's not as if you have Control 75 in comparison. It's not like that at all. It's just going to count Control 25 one time. The reason you might have more agents with that same skill on there is just so you can ride 
these engines because the engines have to be manned. Everything else does not have to be manned. You see how I have this? It requires, it's optional, uh, 22. And if you had the 22 for the power gen, which is what's required for that, then you do not gain anything from that. It's not like, it's not like oh, if you have an agent on there, you get 20% more efficiency. No, it's not like that at all. All it does is, if you have an agent on there, it's just another slot you can fill up to, have, to meet your skill point requirement. Now there's hybrid weapons and stuff like hybrid gear. That's the exception. Those actually require you to have the skill requirement for it in order to use it. But as far as not, anything that's not an engine and anything that's not hybrid gear, you can just throw it on there regardless of your skill points and you can use it as good as anyone else. Because look, for example, if if I don't have skills that can, here's why it's important though, because you're going to want to raise some of these just so you can dock people on there. And plus, I mean, heck, having 20 focus beam, you know, having your weapons 40, do 40% 40 more damage is a really good idea too. So, I mean, it, it, it helps you out in more ways than one. It's not like you're going in every way, you know, you're going to want to, if you're going to use armor, well, you're going to want your armor maximized for defense, right? I mean, you're going to want 25% more armor points added to it, right? I mean, so it's not like a, it's not like a hassle or something. It's not like you're shooting yourself in the foot just to hit your requirement. You know, in, in game, that is. Early on, when you're just getting battleships, you, you just maxed out enough skill points. Maybe, maybe you have 300 skill points with three characters, maybe four characters meets it, maybe five, six, seven, eight, you know, probably by the time you have seven or eight characters, you'll have, you know, two or three people at 100 SP. That's my guess. But you never know how you raise your skill points differently, you know, slower than others, or, you know, you're not spreading it out to meet your requirement earlier. That kind of thing can take, take the time a lot longer. So basically, uh, yeah, you could have all kinds of builds here. You could have, what I've kind of looked at, you could have healers, you could have, uh, and as far as, I'm talking combat right now, you can have healers, you can have uh, snipers, you can have shotgun builds, and what I mean by snipers and shotguns is you use guns that have, for, for snipers, you have guns that shoot at a far range, which means, let me show you some gun examples. Uh, the farthest range gun would be Lostrum Blade IV, and then the counterpart mass weapon, the Lostrum Deathbringer. They have, I think Lostrum Deathbringer is a tiny bit further than 9.2. Let's check that out. As a sniper build, what you would do is you try to have a high angular speed and a high linear speed so that your orbit around your opponent is the one that takes dominant precedence, meaning you're both going to be orbiting each other, most likely, because that's what people do to get their point blank range. And without your point blank range, you're at a huge disadvantage. Okay, 9.4. Okay. So, lost from lost uh, Death Ringer wins. Uh, it's the farthest shooting gun. But with the max stats for sniper builds, uh, it's it's overkill because you can only fire at 12, 12 kilometers, even though 50% more of 9.2 is more than 12 kilometers, they hard capped it at 12 kilometers. That's just something they did. I don't like it. It's stupid, I think. It nerfs people that want to be snipers, but whatever, they did it. So no matter what your skill base, even if it mathematically adds up, you cannot fire at someone if they're farther than 12 kilometers away. But right at the 12, you can hit them. So as a sniper build, your, your precision helps you get your point blank damage at further ranges. Now, now what your long shot does, it lets you, since you can already fire at someone at 12 kilometers, it, this is this is where it gets pretty weird too. But uh, I'll, I'll explain it so it makes sense. Every gun, say for example right here, distance 9.4. You think, oh, well I gotta wait till they're 9.4 range to fire at them, unless I have the skills to up my range. Wrong. Um, what's actually how it works is you can fire at them 
immediately once they're 12 kilometer range. But every gun is this way. Every single gun, even the shotgun gun is what I call them. That, that's just my name for them. The ones that shoot really close, that have a close point blank range, all of them can fire 12 kilometers away. In fact, if you start the attack, and then once you hit 12 kilometers, it will start firing at them. Even if it's the most weakest range, lowest range gun, it will do it. But the thing is, it's going to do range damage. So let me show you that. So it's where it says ranged, where does it say range? Or distance, my bad. That's just kind of the term I gave it, range damage, because it's not point blank. So see, this gun right here, it's, it's a, I call it a shotgun, because it's point blank is 1.9 through 1.1, which is really close range. That's where it does the high end of the spectrum, 2400. To, to now, obviously, if you have, you know, mass we heavy weapon skill and increased damage, that will multiply this to make it more damage, things like that. And if you have cooldown skill, it'll make this uh, 1.2, you could you could slice that in half, make it 0.6, you know what I mean? So you can make that quicker, too. And thus, uh, doubling your DPS in a uh, in fact, if you, uh, you know, get all this stuff going right. Anyways, you, you could even do more than that, but anyway, you, you get, you get my point. But, um, and that's just for, and, and that's for all your guns uh, that are equipped at the time. So let's see here. For this, let's look at a better gun, because that one, uh, that's just a short range. It's hard to imagine it. Yeah, here's a better one the highest range gun in the game. So this one right here, if you have precision 25 skill, meaning you max it out, you got 25 increased aim and you got 25 precision. And that's another thing I gotta say, the stats in this game, they go to 25. Everything 25. You cannot go higher than 25 even if you have skill points remaining. So, so that, that's how that goes. So yeah, uh, so, so 25 precision, that would mean you have 50% increased point blank range. So basically add 1.5 times to that and then you know do the same thing for the 4.8. Uh, so 1.5 times to the 7.2 I don't know. What is that? Ten point eight, yeah I knew that. I checked it out before. Okay, so that means you you can hit the max damage here at 10.8. Now notice how this is a range here, 11, 6, 0 to 5. It's like, oh, well, if you're not in point blank, do you just hit the lowest damage? Nope, because there's a range. This is where long shot comes in, and this is where sniper builds can be very glorified. And a lot of people don't raise long shot, and for a good reason. I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of one of those you gotta know what you're doing, and if you're you gotta have enough speed to pull off the orbit correctly in order to do your thing properly. That's so shotgun builds and sniper builds are something I've thought of, but I've never actually done. I've never made the skills for them. It's something that will probably come up later as people check out every avenue of skill customization possible. But um but the idea is so if you can outspeed someone you can keep a consistent orbit of say 11 kilometers or whatever, 11 km or whatever, or whatever, 11.5, maybe 12, something like that. Let's just say 12. So if they have precision, but they don't have long shot, but you have precision and you have long shot, and you're both using the same weapons, okay, and you're orbiting outside of the 10.8 range, so let's say 11.5, they will not be doing this full damage of 5,800. You won't either. They'll be doing a lot closer to the 1160 because you're outside of their point blank range quite a bit. And they don't have long shot, which long shot increases their distance. And that's basically their, uh, basically, here's, here's how this works. If you have a lot more of a long shot stat, they don't have any, you're going to get your distance multiply it a lot further. So say they just have precision, but you have precision and long shot. Then your distance here, 9.4, let's multiply that by 1.5. So 14.1 is where your gun starts to do 
the weakest damage and everything closer to that to 10.8. So the 10.8 to 14.1 range, say 14 uh, instead of 14.1, 14 say you hit 14, that's 0.1 closer, you're going to do more damage. So it starts scaling up. But let's say that's a big range. For, uh, 10.8 let's type this out here to 14.1 so say that you're at 10 11.5 that's very close to the point blank range on this scale and that's why you want a higher number here because that means the percentage of where this would fall on that range is closer to your point blank. If this were smaller, then you you would be doing less damage on the scale. So let's see here, 10.8. Let's let's do some math here real quick. 14.1 minus 10.8. So there's technically a range of point uh, of 3.3 scale. Yeah, basically that's a scale in between there. So if we're if our example is eleven point five, then let's see here. Point two, point seven. I think I have twenty one. Okay, so basically you're doing twenty one point one percent less damage than than uh point blank. That's our So you're, you're basically going to be doing something like that. Is that what? It, and then let's see. that's with the max long shot and max precision compared to max precision and you're doing 11.5 range what was that gun again nine point we're using the death bringer okay so we've got a scale 10.8 to 9.4 times yeah, 9.4 times 1.25 11.75 see how much different that is so let's see here they're 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 very close to the end meaning they're gonna do almost almost the 1160. So they're only 0.25 off from doing 1160. See how much it, so snipe you can snipe them. You won't be doing your point blank, and that might be what takes people off from this concept, but you'll be doing a lot more than they'll be doing at that range. Alright. And you actually yeah. Yeah, so, but the thing is, the trick is to a sniper build is this 11.5 orbit that we're using as our example here, you need to be able to keep that. And in order to keep that, is you need high speed. I'm oh, sorry, let's uh, look at this. And to get high speed, you need a lot of pilot, you need a lot of control, you need a lot of maneuver, you're going to need good engine, and then you're going to need uh, good boosters. The thing is, if you do all that, you're going to need, it's going to mean you're going to have more generators or more boosters, something like that. Or, sorry, more generators and more engines. And what's going to happen here is, some, uh, what's going to happen is, you're going to have less armor than someone that's not a sniper build. Or you're going to have less armor region or both. Probably a bit of both. See what I mean? So, but... So you need to be sure that at that range, can you handle the, you want to, you want, 
it's it's a very good art to this because you want to guess kind of their damage scale or prepare for most of it or or be good enough to where you can kill them before they kill you or, or hurt your armor too much or something whatever you're going for uh, so you want to so this is where the game gets really cool with all this uh, customization here is you want to be sure you have just enough armor but you still have the energy to do what you're doing and definitely need the speed. So sniper build is all about the speed here. So you'd be orbiting them around 12, and since you're so much, or sorry, 11.5, and since you're so much faster than their ship, you keep the orbit. They can't close the gap on you. They can quick warp away, but, but you can easily follow and get back in your range. So... And even if they quick warp away and then you warp to them and they quick warp right onto you, which won't happen because you'll be going so fast that, uh, I mean, I've, I've tried this out with ships not as fast as I'm talking about. They'll they'll uh, overshoot and you just trace them, you just follow them. But let's say, for example, they this is a surprise attack and they quick warp up to you because they kind of suspect your sniper build, so they're not going to rush up to you the normal flight path with their normal speed because that would take a slow time and then you just set your orbit on them and, and rain them on, rain on them, get them in lockdown, you know, where they can't orbit closer to you because because you're out speeding them so much. Uh, instead, let's say it's a sneak attack and they get the first quick warp on you so so that by the time you see them they're already in your face and they're pounding on you. Well if they're not a shotgun build and well, they can still have, you know, they have high, they can still have a pretty good damage on you if they're not a shotgun build. But the thing is, they'll probably beat you at that point because by the time you establish your your orbit, I mean, this is talking one ship versus one ship. Fleets are a whole other thing. You never know that 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 stuff could go anyway. But uh, they'll probably kill you at that point because you're. Your defenses are going to be not nearly as good as theirs, and they're going to be just good enough to ward off this damage I'm talking about right here. This uh, 1160 times 5 and then times whatever their uh, weapon is, which, you know, that's kind of a rough range for endgame. You know, it's, it's, it's not too far off, you know, it's kind of close. Times 5 and then uh, it's 5 guns and then times whatever increase they have, 50% for heavy weapon, or, and laser damage, probably times 60% because lasers, 61% because lasers by average are uh, right around 11% stronger than all of their mass weapon counterparts. It's just mass weapons take less space on your ship and less energy, so they're still good, but for the most part, mass weapons are, are more for defensive because they give you more room to build your defenses to use your ship component space that's right you have component space on your ship right here so even if you fit everything on you want it, you know each thing you know takes space size 14 600 so like mass weapons take less space than lasers but they do less like 11% less damage so anyways you want to you're going to want to have enough armor and region to try to at least highly knock off, you know, times five of whatever gun you think they have, five of, and whatever stats you think they have. So a lot of calculation here, a lot of strategy, things like that. Now, this is similar to the, the shotgun build, is the exact same thing as a sniper build. Same build, exact, like, if you, if you build for, a, like, build, same as stats is what I'm saying, same stats. Just you're swapping out the guns, and as a result, you probably be swapping some generator and armor and stuff too. But it's the same exact concept. And if you have the stat agents that are built for the sniper build, you have everything you need for a shotgun build. So basically, if you're a corporation that builds for a sniper build, you have at the same time built for a shotgun build. So you're interchangeable. You just need different parts for like different parts with the same concept. Like you're still aiming for maximizing your defenses against what you suspect. Uh, you might need faster 
maybe a bit faster, but the same point stands. Is you're out orbiting them, so you need a lot of speed. You're going to need to max out those stats probably, and then you're going to need you know high emphasis on boosters, and then weak emphasis on armor, just enough to skate you by to cover their low end damage, because because it goes the other way too. What I just explained about how you'll be outside of their point blank range, the same is true if you're very close to them. So like I said, 2.5 range is what you're kind of looking at. You see, okay, 4.8 here, if they have max precision, uh, they're not going to be doing that much damage. They're not going to do, they're not going to be doing point blank damage to you unless you're like 2.4. But like I showed you, some of those guns, 1.1 to 1.9 point blank range, uh, that, those are shotgun guns is what I like to call them. So, and what's cool is you got your precision and all that. You can try to orbit them at say like 0.5 or 0.9, and maybe not actually. Yeah, at point. Let's see. What is 1.1 divided by, by two? Uh, you could technically do your max point blank damage at a 0.75 orbit. That's crazy. I know, and it'd be so cool to watch. You need an insane amount of speed. Probably you'll be using cruisers. You probably could not ever get that speed with the battleship compared to someone else's. If you did, uh, you'd have you'd have insane problems with. Uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to keep it consistent at least. You know? And even if a cruiser, you'd have a hard time keeping the speed consistent because if you're way too fast on your linear speed compared to your angular speed. You're going to be going uh, these ovals around them instead of the circle you want, the nice, small, consistent circle. So you might not even want linear speed that high. That's another thing that you're going to have to experiment with. It. I've experimented a little bit, and I've noticed you have too much linear speed. Uh, your ship goes so fast that before it can turn from the angular speed catching up to it for such a small distance, it's 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 going like five kilometers out of the way, you know. That's what the fastest fastest ship in game. I, I made one of those with the max stats for it, for max speed stats for the uh, scout, like ten point eight linear speed, something like that. But anyway, that's that, so that has problems, and that's obviously way overloaded on the linear speed. But the concept still applies. You're gonna have to have a lot more angular speed because for for the shotgun build. For the sniper build, you probably want it very balanced. Probably even even 50 50 is probably good. You know, just max them both out, you're probably good. Since I mean, when you're doing a 12 kilometer orbit around someone, uh, your speed is more important than your angle at that point. Uh, it'll probably be just fine. And, and you notice that too with a lot of ships that don't even have angular speed bonuses whatsoever. Their angular speed is good enough for a 6 kilometer orbit around something. So, things like that. And so, 12 is way out there. You need even less angular. So, it, it'll be fine, most likely. Obviously, it depends who you're fighting, because if they're really fast, then you're going to out and do that. But probably not an issue. But you might have it just in case. And, and that's the thing. When you're that far out there at 12 kilometer, having way too much angular speed doesn't hurt you. In fact, having you can't have too much angular speed because it's not going to angle in any quicker than or it's not going to angle in any different than what you set it to so if you set it to 12 kilometers the worst it's going to do is keep that 12 kilometers it's not going to angle to where it gets you to nine or it's not going to do that crap if that happens that's because they're they're too fast and they're gaining up on you or your linear speed is just insanely too fast to where uh, it's kind of doing these ovals in order for it's going too fast compared to your angular, and that's and that's not because you don't have enough angle. Well, I mean it is, but it's it's because you overloaded the linear speed, and that's not hardly going to happen anyway. That's not really something to worry about, as far as like anything that's cruisers, or battleships. I don't worry about that. It's, you're going to have a hard time getting enough speed either way. And, that, and so those are two builds I haven't really seen. People do, but they have a lot of potential because you're forcing your enemy 
to use their ranged damage. And most people don't use long shot for good reason. Like I said, they capped it at 12 kilometers. And they don't understand the dynamic I explained of the range to point blank, how that works, and how the damage calculation works there. A lot of people don't understand that. I tested this out. I've run the numbers on it. Like I was saying, that with, well, that's why I did the numbers there, the 3.3 .3 and all that. So I've actually tested this out to see the damage line exactly up with what we thought, what I thought it would be compared to that. But um, anyways, so if you've got shotgun builds, basically. You point blank up to their face, orbit them really close, and have just enough armor and region to take off the damage, the, the little damage will be, the, the lower end damage will be doing, because they won't be doing point blank. So you get, so, so that kind of thing. And you probably have to be a cruiser, so, so it gets, it gets complicated, but there are builds for it that can shave off the damage really well of, of what you'd expect of an in-game battleship with five LHBs. You would basically put on a rear cost key uh, battle bot to a battle rep bot. The one, thing, the one that does 6,000 armor region. Anyway, that's the kind of conclusion of this video. I just kind of want to tell you a little bit about the game and tell you some ideas for strategy here and kind of how that goes. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.